what's going on everybody this is DK Dynamite and today we're gonna be talking about the reveal of season 5 the roadmap trailer and even some unexpected crossovers definitely stay tuned but before we jump into that be sure to hit that subscribe button down below drop a like and make sure you have notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Cold War Year 2 Warzone Modern Warfare 2 and any other future Call of Duty as well I want to thank all you guys for the immense support on last night's live stream where we went ahead and played Warzone Black Ops Cold War which is also sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends for those out there that go ahead and download the game and do the tutorial I'll be doing open lobby with every single person out there that does show support for the channel again the qr code will be on screen during the gameplay and the link is also down below i want to thank all you guys once again for coming out and showing some crazy support over last night but i know my voice is a little shot since we did do a good what nine hour live stream it went on for longer than expected but that's how it usually goes here on the channel of course also be sure to check out my partner manscapes so they recently released their best package yet with the lawnmower 4.0 you can use a shimmer to get a clean shave in those hard to reach places when your significant other isn't around to help the package features the lawnmower 4.0 4.0 trimmer with a 90 minute battery, the weed whacker trimmer for your nose and ears, the crop reserver deodorant, and the crop reviver toner. You also get some boxer briefs and a really nice travel bag. Be sure to use code TWITCH20 to get 20% off all orders at manscaped.com. Now the first thing I want to start with is this report from PlayStation Size who is claiming that a new update has been added to the database for Black Ops Cold War. It's unclear what's in this update. I'm sure we'll end up knowing a little bit more about it at some point early next week, but as of right now we could just predict that it'll be more bundles, which I'm totally cool with, but if it's anything more than that such as a map or some weapons even a game mode i'm totally on board with that i know many many months ago there were a lot of rumors and claims that slasher deathmatch was coming back to cold war it was going to be similar to scream deathmatch just without that halloween twist but i think considering halloween's just around the corner now might as well add that back in for like a little halloween event that we could see maybe in cold war vanguard and warzone we'll have to wait and see how that ends up working but fingers crossed for the best possible conclusion to my black ops cold war coverage here on the channel and either way it's been an absolute honor covering Cold War for longer than I could have expected here with year two. But other than that, it was also confirmed today that season five is indeed 100% the final season for Vanguard and Warzone 1. So for those out there that didn't want to believe those rumors a couple of months ago, listen, I totally get where you guys were coming from because there was a season six for MW and Cold War. Why would anybody believe there wouldn't be a season six for Vanguard despite the game's shortcomings, despite the low interest in Vanguard altogether? We still all predicted that there would be a season six to kind of bridge that gap from season five to the release of MW2, but nope, but look like season five might be a bit of a longer season to keep us until season one starts for modern warfare 2 however we don't have specifics about that just yet but there will likely also be a haunting event at some point in like maybe early october if i had to guess of course because it was confirmed there will still be a season five reloaded though which i don't think anybody out there even doubted it was confirmed that the download for vanguard season five will go live august 23rd at 9 a.m pacific which is 12 p.m eastern that'll also probably be the time when the new multiplayer map and likely the weapons also become usable in a private match that's what we've seen with every past season of Vanguard. And then the update for Warzone will be August 24th, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, which is also the same starting time as Season 5 itself, as it always works for every single season here of Vanguard. Now, Raven also confirmed that Titanium Trials Duos is now live in Warzone Pacific, which is great news considering there's only, like, what, five days left of the event, five days left of Season 4 altogether. So hopefully this mode does help you guys out with getting those wins you need for either the Liquid Metal camo or the Skynet camo. I know winning is not easy over in quads. It is not for the faint of far but maybe duos will definitely shake things up a little bit and really improve the experience but here we have it the official cover art and roadmap for season five known as the last stand what's funny about this though is that some of the other key art for season five here doesn't even mention vanguard it just says call of duty warzone last stand which i find kind of interesting but the roadmap does mention vanguard so at least that's there and if you look at the warzone side of things we do have operation last call brand new mode and even a bit of a point of interest change for caldera there we can see a volcano which has been rumored for many months as well people out there always want to see a volcano completely erupt and just destroy peak since peak is a pretty negatively received point of interest rebirth island resurgence supreme which sounds cool heroes versus villains community event we then have uh, new features like the rage serum we have a supply drop uav kill streak not sure what that could be i'll read about this more on the blog doomsday station supply boxes for zombies there we have the final round base experience the archon featuring a new quest narrative and a boss fight for vanguard multiplayer again it's very minimal there are no new modes at all just two multiplayer maps one called beheaded and then one called fortress which is coming in season and then for operators we have the unexpected crossover between black ops modern warfare and even call of duty ghost and even a bit of advanced warfare as we'll get to so we have menendez khaled al-assad serif rourke and then of course uh serif and rourke are coming during the mid-season we have the ex1 laser weapon from advanced warfare we have revolver pistol and then we of course have the ra225 it looks like the am 63 it's an smg and then we have what looks 
like the F2000 from the original MW2, which is currently named the BP50. And then we have the Lena 57 also coming in season, followed by some Horsemen of the Apocalypse bundles, kind of following that trend of these Horsemen Apocalypse type characters we've been getting added as bundles in previous Vanguard seasons. And lastly, we have that Umbrella Academy crossover, which also got rumored and leaked out a couple of weeks ago, which the press also reported on. Now, I was thinking that the cinematic cutscene would have come out yesterday, since usually with our Vanguard seasons, we end up getting the cinematic cutscene posted exactly a week before the season starts. And then the next day, we end up getting the roadmap, blog post reveal. But today, they decided to drop everything within a span of like two hours, which I'm not complaining about. It's still cool. So we have this beautiful CGI cutscene here, which unfortunately does not follow up on that narrative that I thought was really interesting at the beginning of the post-launch season with Butcher meeting Mason's crew. I thought they were definitely going to tie that in, considering Menendez is the face of season five here. But they did say Endgame was the biggest crossover, right? Well, Call of Duty's going to try to one-up that here by crossing over several different CODs, many of which we didn't even know were canon to the current timeline, and they honestly might not be. I'm just exaggerating a little bit. I try to make sense of the story here in this cutscene, and there's too many inconsistencies. I mean, first off, Menendez is holding an EM2, which I guess is cool, which is that laser weapon from Advanced Warfare. Does that mean AW is canon now? I doubt it. I mean, this cutscene takes place in the late 70s, so how is Seraph here, right? She was born in 2027. We also have Rourke from Ghost, which I guess you could maybe reintroduce and reboot a little bit as a character for the upcoming plot of Modern Warfare 2. I don't know, but considering Rourke's icon or image in the roadmap is taken directly from a COD mobile piece of art, that kind of tells me that maybe that's our indication that this is just a fun season and not meant to be taken seriously in terms of the canon. It's just something that's in-game right now that's going to wrap up Vanguard with a bang, considering the low interest in the game throughout the entire life cycle. Now, the reason I say we're in the late 70s is because you can clearly tell this is a follow-up from Season 4's intro cinematic cutscene where Butcher was fighting with a group that Kingsley put together over Nazi gold. And looking at how Kingsley isn't in this cutscene, I think it looks like Butcher actually killed Arthur. <laughs> he killed Arthur Kingsley over in Caldera, and now we have these villains flying over the island, dropping a bomb inside of the volcano to erupt peak. So, I mean, looking at the narration from Menendez, which again, the full cutscene is linked down below, they're trying to get revenge on all the heroes that took him out to begin with, but I'm getting heavy COD Mobile vibes from this crossover here, which I don't mind at all. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this cutscene also has some phenomenal CGI, as you guys probably noticed, but I do wonder if this big crossover does kind of set the tone for how future Warzone seasons will look for MW2, games after that, where they won't really follow a coherent story like we saw with Black Ops Cold War, MW19, but instead will kind of just go all out like COD Mobile and just add everything just for absolutely no reason, just for the sake of doing so. I wonder if that's also just something they're doing for Vanguard here, considering the low interest in the game. They're just like, hey, why not just end on a bang and add everything in from Advanced Warfare, Ghost, MW, why not? I wonder if that's kind of the approach here, or if it does mean anything for the future of how the story is handled. But I'll take a look at the blog post that was dropped earlier this afternoon. It does say, Legends Never Die in Last Stand, the final season for Vanguard and Warzone live on August 24th. It's good to be bad. A cast of legendary Call of Duty villains are out for revenge, led by none other than Crime Lord Raul Menendez. Pick a side in the Heroes vs. Villains community event, Defender Sabotage Caldera and Operation Last Call, deploy to two new multiplayer maps, and return to Egypt in the new round-based zombies experience, the Archons. Let's start with our multiplayer content here. We have our two new multiplayer maps, Beheaded, as you can see, which is coming at launch, and then we have Fortress coming in season. So, unfortunately, no remasters from World War II, World at War. It's only two maps coming here in season five. There might be a surprise one drop, maybe in the mid-season, if they want to do that, but it looks like they're trying to just move on from Vanguard as fast as possible, to the point where they aren't dropping much content for the base game at all. Maybe the player count is low, to the point where they're like, hey, why are we going to add in more content for a game that nobody's really playing? Now, I do find it cool, though, that Beheaded takes place in Times Square, didn't expect to see a New York multiplayer map, but again, rumors came out about this map a good maybe week ago, and I covered that in a video that I posted a few days ago, talking about kind of everything we know so far with the final season here, and the other map, which is known as Fortress, also takes place in the Mediterranean, a medium-sized, close-quarters type of interior, which uh, looks pretty impressive. Looking forward to seeing how that's going to go. We then have our new zombies experience, the Archon, the final round-based map for this game, and right away from this image, we're like, okay, hold on a second. We have a Cortifex boss fight coming in that dark ether section of Terra Maledicta, which I think we all predicted for sure. One of the weapons we could see in this image as well, we have the Wonder Waffle, we have a Ray Gun there, we have the Decimator Shield from Terra Maledicta, so I don't think we're getting a new Wonder Weapon in this map. If we do, that'll be fantastic, but for now, we're at least gonna get all the returning Wonder Weapons from our previous maps over in Vanguard Zombies. As it says, from a Cursed Desert Battle, 
or excuse me, from a cursed desert battlefield to the heart of the Dark Aether, past the trials, confront the Construct, and defeat the Archon in the epic conclusion of Vanguard Zombies. The final battle approaches, get ready to return to Egypt and take on new quests in the finale of Vanguard Zombies following the tragic secrets unearthed at Shinonuma, gather crucial intel, survive round after round of the undead, and face off against court effects in the deathless within the Dark Aether itself. You need every advantage you can get, so be sure to hit up the Perk Fountains, Altar of Covenants, Tome of Rituals, and the Pack Munch Machine, and prepare for a larger-than-life final battle. And and then here we have it, an image of the map itself, which is essentially Terra Maledicta with a green tint. We can see Menendez there holding that laser EM-2 from Advanced Warfare, shooting out a zombie. We see something there in the background. I'm not sure what that is. Is that the Pack-a-Punch? I don't know exactly what that is, but... Okay, I get it, guys. It is Terra Maledicta with a green tent. You guys are like, wait, how can DK possibly defend this? Well, here's the thing, right? A rumor came out last night from the usual suspects, and they didn't post a leaked image or anything, but they did post essentially uh, a description and like a concept image of what the Archon was going to be like, and people absolutely flipped out. They couldn't accept it. It would be the same map, just with a green tent. And here's the thing. I don't know if they changed the layout at all of the map. We don't know much about the map yet, aside from what's being said in this blog, but maybe with the low player count Terra Maledicta had, actually Activision figured, hey, if we release the same map again, but in round-based form, people might actually play it, and the map itself won't go to waste, so why not just do that? So we also have some beautiful images of the Archon posted by the Goat himself prestigious key over on Twitter, and the real reason why I'm not bothered by the fact that this is Terra Maledicta in round-based form is because, to me, content is content. I mean, we weren't even supposed to get any Treyarch zombies this year anyway. It's not even Treyarch's game. People out there that are criticizing Treyarch over this, I just don't get that. I mean, there's a short gap between Shinonuma and the Archon to the point where I highly doubt Treyarch had much time to really work on this so i rather them work on a really epic easter egg and boss fight like this instead of making a whole new map environment and a whole layout might as well use a map people probably didn't even play much anyway when it first came out back during what season two and considering we're about to go on a two-year hiatus without zombies i think it's still something interesting to further the dark ether narrative so that we're pretty much caught up to speed on the lore of this new story by the time black ops 2024 rolls around but it also says watch out for more info from treyarch on what's to come in the final season including the launch date and time for the main quest details on new buffs and gameplay improvements, new zombie challenges with unique calling card rewards, new battle pass weapon support, additional weapon unlock challenges to tackle, and more. So yeah, we're going to get some more calling cards as we get every season for zombies, but I wonder if there's going to be a super easter egg reward of any sort, even a bonus calling card for having done all the quests in Vanguard Zombies. Highly doubt it, but maybe we'll end up getting something. You never know. We then have five new weapons. First off, the EX-1. I keep calling it the EM-2, the EM-1. Uh, sorry if I'm all over the place with uh, the name of this weapon. I keep forgetting, but yes, the EX-1 laser coming at launch right a prototype energy rifle effective at long range and highly customizable this prototype energy rifle leaves behind traditional ballistics in favor of a customizable battery system used to power its attacks effective at long range weapon requires a cooling off period after depleting its charge capacity you don't have to worry about running out of ammo but get caught during the reload and you're in trouble it sounds pretty damn cool and you can also equip the heat muzzle for extra charge capacity so there'll be attachments for this thing which i'm really interested in. i don't think there are any attachments for it in advanced warfare and start a new battery transform the ex one capabilities with a burst barrel or charge sniper barrel its gunsmith potential is impressive with options for every scenario i want to see how this is going to work in warzone though and even zombies can't wait to see how that's going to work out for those modes we're gonna have the ra225 also coming at launch we have an smg here a lightweight smg boasts a fast fire rate and quick handling perfect for shredding enemies in close mid-range battles if you can manage its upward kick it's great for objective play in tight areas though you may want to pair it with a heavier damage dealing weapon when more firepower is needed and uh, highly customizable via Gunsmith as well. Options for greater power, handling, accuracy. You guys get what's going on. Then during the launch window of Season 5, so likely a good maybe week or two, maybe even a bit longer than that after the season starts, we're going to get this brand new Revolver, which looks pretty crazy. I also want to point out that this is actually also a skin from COD Mobile, if I'm not mistaken. So we're getting a pretty cool COD Mobile crossover here in The Last Stand, which I'm not complaining about either. I like COD Mobile. Uh, we have a rare weapon, which is a villain's dream, capable of landing one-hit melee animations while also holding six rounds in the chamber for extra ver versatility, excuse me. So yeah, this has like a bit of a uh, stiletto, right, on the revolver itself, which is really damn cool looking. <laughs> so it does say you can buy it or you can get it by purchasing it in a bundle or by completing one of two in-game challenges. An MP, get 15 melee kills, and I think that's it. It's that simple. Just get 15 melee kills. You don't have to do it in 15 different games, which is crazy, or in zombies, get 1,000 eliminations using pistols that have been 
pack a punch. Also pretty simple, but the MP1 might take you like 10 seconds in comparison to the zombies ones here. Now it also says mid-season armaments. Earn two more weapons launching in the mid-season update, the BP-50 and the Lena 57 ARs. That's a total of five new weapons arriving in the last stand, perfect for carrying out all your villainous deeds. So no shotguns, no snipers. We just have the EM-1, or excuse me, the EX-1, I can't talk. We also have uh, ARs and SMGs, but that is going to be it for the entire post-launch season of Vanguard. We just got weapons added to the AR and SMG classes, and even a pistol here, which is a bit of a special weapon as it seems. But lastly, when it comes to Warzone, it does say Caldera's fate lies in your hands. We have the volcanic POI expansion to peak where a major geological event occurring within the launch of Season 5 will lead to a transform peak as Lara runs down the mountainside in all modes and shoots out over the island during Operation Last Call. We have a brand new Gulag also coming to Caldera, which looks pretty interesting. Fight for redeployment in the new volcanic-themed Gulag. Best your opponent in this new face-off pit inspired by an old favorite and another shot at securing victory. So I'm not sure what this is based off of. Let me know what your ideas are down below in the comments. But this is the closest we're probably going to get to a days of summer. We have some nice summer vibes here from this image alone. It also says new weather and light changes. The storm has cleared on Caldera, the sunlight peeking through the volcano's billowing smoke. Rebirth Island sees new lighting changes as well, featuring a warm and lush sunset, casting a vibrant hue over the map. We also have new items and tactical opportunities. Looks like a skin from COD Mobile as well, to be honest with you. I'm sure it actually is. We have a Doomsday Station. Discover the seismic device found within Caldera's primary battle royale game mode. Trigger the device and enemy helicopters arrive to surround the station. Sounds pretty crazy. Deploying enemy soldiers to attack your position. So, that's how you spawn an enemy AI. I think it's something that we're also going to see a lot in Warzone too, which is really interesting. Remain close to the Doomsday Station and defend yourself for a chance at earning powerful items and a unique watch cosmetic for your operator. Only one Doomsday Station will appear per match with multiple possible spawn locations. That sounds pretty cool. I'll make a video on that. Pay the required 10,000 to activate it and prepare for a thunderous fight. We have a Supply Box UAV for assistance in tracking down more items. That's actually really cool. It will mark nearby unopened Supply Boxes on the player's tech map for around 15 seconds. Find a Supply Box UAV in Supply Boxes or purchase one at a buy station. That that actually sounds impressive. I also hope this makes the Warzone 2 on day one. We also have personal supply box. Track down the extremely rare crate with the assistance of the supply box UAV to acquire your favorite loadout weapons in Warzone. Each club member gets a huge XP boost as well. That's actually pretty cool. We have the Rage Serum. Uh, fuel upgrade allows you to become violently unstable, resulting in a vicious effective boost to your close quarters fighting. So maybe something like Crank, but over in Warzone. That's going to be interesting. Now we also have the new mode Operation Last Call coming at launch. So cool off things or cause mayhem. LTM inspired by s &D. You can choose to defend Caldera by defusing bombs around the island or sabotage it by detonating the explosives at designated bomb sites. When there's two different outcomes, depending on your performance and your intent to cause chaos. I'm really excited to see that because s &D is life. So seeing that in Warzone is going to be really interesting. We're going to have Lava Rock. Uh, lava rocks are crashing into Caldera, and no one is safe from their volcanic fumes. Stay out of their landing zones to survive in the public event within Operation Last Call. So that'll be like a mid-game event that you end up seeing during that LTM. And lastly, we have the new seasonal event, Heroes vs. Villains. Kind of ironic that Black Ops 4 also ended on a note with a Heroes vs. Villains kind of event. So they'll say, choose your side and lead them to victory. Collect villain or hero tokens in all game modes by eliminating opponents and scavenging supply boxes. And then enjoy a discount for faction bundles at the buy station. Anytime you purchase a faction bundle, you get a discount on one other item across all buy stations. Winning Team's unique weapon blueprint will all be given to everybody following the event. Players also have the chance to earn other exclusive rewards like the legendary animated 1v1 calling card, uh, the Heroes or Villains Weapon Charm, the Conflict Spike melee weapon blueprint, and the Time Duality Watch and more. I'm not sure if that means there's going to be challenges you could do in Vanguard or ones that you can just do in Warzone. It'll probably be the latter if I had to take a guess. And then it'll say more on the way with the mid-season update, which we're not going to know more about for another couple of weeks, likely after the COD Next event and after the beta weekends for MW2 multiplayer. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the reveal that we got today for Season 5? Whether it was the roadmap, the trailer, the unexpected crossovers. How are you feeling about everything coming to the final season known as The Last Stand for Vanguard and Warzone 1? And also, what are your expectations for the interesting patch we're about to get for Black Ops Cold War? Is it going to be more than bundles featured in that patch? Really hope you've enjoyed, and peace out, everybody.